Hi all, welcome to Salesforce in 5 minutes. In this video, we are going to talk about what exactly is deployment and we are going to understand everything about deployment, right? Like for an example, we are going to understand what is deployment, why do we do deployment, what are the different types of orgs that are available in Salesforce itself and what are the different types of the tools that are available in Salesforce itself. But even before getting started, if you really like my videos, I request you to please subscribe to this channel. So let's jump to our video. Okay. Before even moving what exactly deployment is, let's understand what is the life cycle of the code through which it goes through and which are the different types of the orgs that are available in Salesforce itself. So one org that is dev org. Okay. We'll also understand what is the significance of it, each of the org. And next is QA org. If you already know about it, you can just skip this video. But if it is for complete fresher who do not know anything about what how things go through in Salesforce org. Next is a UAT org. And last and the final one is nothing but the prod org or the production. Okay, so these are the different types of the orgs that are available in Salesforce itself or uh, through which our code will go through. Okay, each of these org the code is going to go through. So let's understand the significance of it. Dev org is the org where actually a developer is going to code. Okay, they are going to do POCs, they are going to do trials and all that stuff. So there can be a possibility that the code inside the dev org can be very cluttered. Okay, usually dev orgs are cluttered. Okay, the reason is because everybody is going to try anything. Okay, they might create five more extra classes, one more extra classes to do the same functionality, but they won't push it further. Okay, but dev org can be very cluttered because developers do all the kinds of POC testing and all that stuff and what we call it as uh, try and test and do all that stuff inside the dev org itself. Okay, they can mess up as much as they want. They can do whatever they want inside the dev org. Okay, next is nothing but the QA org. QA org is nothing but quality assurance org or we can say that testers org. Okay, now here is the this is the org where the code is been tested actually. So this is the place where uh, the testing team is going to test through multiple scenarios even the scenarios positive scenarios negative scenarios they're going to test scenarios that might not even happen but they just test it for the quality assurance right and let's say there is some kind of issue they again tell it back to the developer so they tell it back that there is an issue inside this particular piece of the code or particular functionality so what does the developer does is it he tries to reproduce the same inside the developer org okay if it is reproduced then it's fine he's going to fix it and again move it to the QA org but if it's not then in that case there is no issue right so in that case there might be a possibility that the QA team have might messed up while creating data or something like that okay so basically QA org is nothing but used for testing purposes okay this is the org where all the kinds of testing happens regression testing smoke testing different types of the testings happens usually developer does the unit testings okay he tests this particular functionality but once it is handed over to the QA team, QA team tests his functionality along with the overall functionality that is existing. So that's what we'll call regression testing, right? There is an existing functionality plus your functionality. There might be a possibility that your functionality might have uh, help or might have disturbed the existing functionality. So to do that, we have to do regression testing or that type of a testing. Okay, I'm not a tester, but yeah, I know a bit kind of things that testing team does. So QA org is the org where testing team does the testing. Now next is the UAT org. UAT org is nothing but where a customer does testing. Okay, customer is going to execute his basic business scenarios where he's going to use this org. And what are the basic business scenarios that he's going to perform? He's going to perform inside the UAT. Okay. So you, in UAT, customer is usually going to test and he's going to test with the basic functionality okay like for an example if he is using a uh, let's say a billing system he's going to make a basic bill try to make a bill if it is not possible or if it is not happening properly so he's going to again tell it back to the developer and then developer is going to fix it move it to the QA and then again go to the UAT so that's what is the UAT for UAT is for basic functionality or the business scenarios are going to get executed at the UAT or we call uh, that's what is the unit UAT okay now once UAT has been passed next is the production environment production environment is an actual user is going to use it okay so let's say if I'm going to build a functionality for Domino's or McDonald's or some kind of fast food chain okay let's say okay 
uh, the, the uh, then I'm going to deploy this my overall system to this to, to their environment right that is production environment in that case their customers are actually going to use this system that their customer means normal people who are going to order from them they're actually going to use this system so that's what is the production is production or go live or production live we say okay so production live is nothing but this is the system where actually is used okay by the end customers and their customers okay so that's what the production org is now let's say any kind of functionality you are going to build a very simple kind of functionality or can be very complex basically usually if you're working in a big organization uh, the code is going to be very much complex okay so there is a possibility that you might have hundreds of epics classes okay i'm not exaggerating but actually you might have hundreds of epics classes hundreds of flows five six flows let's say multiple process builder validation rules fields object creation and all that stuff now let's say i have hundreds of epics classes and i do not decide to use deployment okay now what i do is instead of that i have to move this code to the qa right in order to for the QA to test this overall functionality, what I need to do is I will copy paste each of these hundred classes one by one, and then whatever flows I have created that inside the dev, I'm going to replicate the same inside the QA. If I'm not using deployment, okay. So why do we use deployment? That's what we are right now on. So if we do not use deployment, we have to copy paste the classes one by one in QA or we have to create the same flows that we have created inside the dev work inside the QR, which is going to take a lot of amount of time we have to create the same kind of object structure which is the biggest thing okay like creating object structure is going to take a lot of time which have we, which we have created inside the network we have to do the same replicate thing inside the qr okay and even the sequence matters like for an example of course you cannot create a field before creating the object or after creating or before creating the object right so sequence also matters so these are the many different things right if you try to just replicate your dev org inside the qr manually one by one it's going to take months for you to do so okay it's going to take months of to, for you to do so another thing is there can be a possibility that uh, you might mess up okay one small mistake is going to mess up the whole org qa team is going to raise multiple bugs okay and the third and the final thing we use product or we we use deployment is that in production you cannot make changes to the code okay you can deploy it but if you go to the production and if you try to update the trigger it will throw you an error so live code changing is not allowed in the case of the production so how are you going to copy paste the code so that's the reason why we use deployment deployment with the help of the deployment what you can do is you can move all of this code hundreds of epic classes thousands of flows let's say 50 100 fields whatever we have created objects all this can be pushed in one go itself into the qa same can be done from qa to uat and uat to production so all these things can be done within seconds or minutes using the deployment tools so that's the reason why we do deployments using deployment tools okay not copy pasting the code from one or to another but we actually use deployments okay another thing is version control is also one of the most important thing that's what that's where we use gates and all that stuff but right now we are talking about deployment deployment we have to do push, push all the code that is available with us in one go itself and that's the reason why we use deployments the different types of the tools that are available in deployments are chain sets okay one of the uh, tool that is available within salesforce i don't think so it is available in dev Arc. right now that we have the free one that that, that does not have chain sets so Chain sets is one of the way we with the help of which you can select whatever components you want and you can push it from one org to another Next is a VS code with the help of the VS code You can authorize two orgs and you can move from one org to another org easily or you can move from the uh, You can pull from the dev org push it to the git and git will push to the uh, next org So that is also possible VS code is also possible Copad is also one of the tool with the help of which you can deploy the org components from one org to another workbench i think which is one of the most core one which you should understand properly that's because that's what happens at the back end on each of this tool okay so if you understand workbench workbench is a pretty handy tool okay if you do not uh, even if you do not know how to open vs code or how to use vs code chain sets or copado workbench is a go to okay but it includes a bit of manual steps but workbench is a go to with the help of which you can core and corely understand how things are working at the back end and next is the gear sets gear sets is also available with the help of which you can move the code from one or to another so in this video series of deployment we are going to mainly focus on workbench the reason is because workbench is absolutely free 
okay one of the thing is workbench is absolutely free and you will understand the core of deployment okay why we are doing so what is the package.xml why we are retrieving from the source or why we are deploying to the destination or and all that stuff we are going to get a clear picture with the help of the workbench along with these tools there are many more tools available in uh, salesforce itself but these are a few examples and in this video series we are specifically going to focus on workbench so this is what deployment is and that's the reason why like we spoke about that's the reason why we use deployment tools and these are the few deployment tools basically we are going to focus on workbench in this video series so this is all about deployment if you found this video helpful i request you to please subscribe to this channel 